Sasha, and thanks for joining me today. I appreciate it. We're going to talk about thermal imaging for security and safety. Um, Sasha, first, before we go uh, get started, what is your title? Why am I picking the smartest person to talk about this? Why is that you? Oh, okay. <laughs> so I think I think you have too, too many good words to say about me, but thanks for all the kind words. Um, my title is I'm director of uh, product area responsible for the moving cameras in Bosch. Um, so as part of my role, I take care of the of the development and the strategic direction that we take with, with our moving cameras. Let's talk about thermal imaging. Um, part of that uh, responsibility is yours. Who's right. using thermal imaging and in what kind of formats or, or form factors are they is thermal imaging available? Um, interesting question because um, I think uh, thermal cameras bring a great opportunity in the safety and the security uh, industry because these cameras normally generate uh, a picture on your screen, not capturing the light, but the thermal signatures of your scene. Okay. So these cameras are able to very uh, accurately detect the difference between the, uh, the, the temperature of a body and its background and respect to the other surroundings and is able to make pictures for, uh, for you to look at. So it can see through in the scenes where a normal visible camera will have a problem because there's not sufficient light, for example, or there's sometimes even too much light, uh, for example. But this camera is able to uh, look through any illumination scenarios. So that's why in applications where you typically have lighting issues, a thermal camera provides a great solutions to overcome those challenges. So, okay, that that some of the things you said could actually be solved by other cameras. So let's talk about what makes it unique. Let, let's start with a fixed camera, a camera that can't pan, tilt, and zoom around. A right. fixed camera, I would normally think, would be limited to a, a, a thermal fixed camera, limited okay. to a fence line or something like that, where we always want to be looking down that line. However, right. it sounds like there's some applications that um, have to do with uh, maybe... Um, uh, privacy or things like that, where applications are a little bit different than what maybe were considered in the past. Um, I, I, I totally agree with you. I think um, normally when you think about a thermal camera, you are thinking about that you put it on a perimeter protection area or or somewhere where you have very, uh, let's say, uh, critical assets that you want to protect. You try to use those cameras, uh, thermal technology in that areas because you want to always have a view of your scene irrespective of your illumination challenge. But what we are also seeing now is that there are new areas developing um, uh, for using thermal camera where privacy is also very important. Because these days you know that there are strict regulations in, in certain part of the world, for example, US and certain applications in, in Europe, there are very, very strict guidelines how uh, uh, a camera in a public domain can be used to capture the details. And you know, with an optical camera, there are always uh, areas that where you can easily breach into the privacy of, of the people. And in those applications, a thermal camera could be a very, very good solution to able to provide security requirements, which uh, uh, a police authority or a, or, or a homeland security would have, but at the same time also prevent the privacy of the people. So that is where we see that thermal technology is now getting more and more adopted compared to where it was a few years ago, where it was mainly used only in very critical installations where only requirement was that I want to see my scene irrespective of my illumination challenges. Okay, so we're bringing thermal inside. We're bringing it to places where we haven't thought about it before. Um, on the desk you have here, uh, here I'll go full screen so everybody can see what you have, is the, the new device that we're talking about, which is more of a solution for what type of applications? Okay, so um, like we briefly discussed about where a thermal camera plays a role. So a thermal camera solves the problem that when you have a tough illumination situation, it gives you a picture. What we did was, uh, because we were interacting with some of our customers in applications which involved, uh, let's say, security in, in um, conditions where you had a lot of humidity in the scenes. And, and here I'm quoting a real, uh, real uh, customer experience. They have been using thermal cameras to protect some of their assets, but they were very close to uh, a marine coastline. So where normally they had a very high level of humidity. 
the feedback that they gave was that this thermal camera is a very good solution to give me a good detection when I have a, a, a relatively, I'm looking at a dry part of the building or where there's a humidity level is not that high. But the moment we try to look into the areas where or the days when it's raining and the humidity level is too high in the scene, thermal cameras are not able to deliver enough sensitivity or they are not able to differentiate between uh, between the objects in, in the scene. And, and, and that's quite natural because thermal cameras, like I said, they, they depend on the thermal signatures in your scene. So if there's too much humidity or the difference between the uh, the ambient temperature and 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 the and the bodies are not too much then the thermal cameras cannot detect too good so, okay so can i if i could interrupt for one second i'm i'm a guy who lives near washington dc we're on a lot of different bodies of water when you say to me the humidity level um we're, at, we're from a layman's perspective we're talking about fog fog and mist that's correct right okay and uh we also get the the full four seasons so snow rain all True. these things. Now this camera can um, take a look out into a port or something like that for a ship number um, or, or some sort of signature of something coming um, towards shore. I guess the ship number wouldn't help. However, we'll get to uh, the optical capability of this camera, which exactly. I think will, will exactly. clarify some of that. So, okay, so I got you, but it's, it's not just humidity though. We have in this area also a lot of tunnels where there might be smoke and other things like that, right? Correct, correct. So ba basically what I was getting up to is that uh, thermal camera also have some limitations, okay? So when there's a poor lighting, but your weather or environmental conditions are good, thermal cameras are a perfect solution. But if you have conditions where the, your, your humidity level or the, or the uh, temperature of your scene is quite close to the, let's say, the objects you are trying to detect, in that case, the thermal cameras may not be able to give you the best detection capabilities that you're looking for. And in that, that's the reason we also integrated, along with our thermal camera into this, also an optical camera. Now, this optical camera is able to detect or give you uh, details in the situations where your thermal camera is not able to detect uh, or give you a good detection. So you kind of have the best of both the worlds combined into one single camera over here. Now, there are few solutions out there in the market who do something similar that they put two, uh, they call it a bispectral camera or something like that, where you have an optical and a thermal camera together in the housing. But we went a step ahead of that because we knew that for operators, it's not so easy in a large installation to basically look at two streams on the camera and try to always match between them, you know, what is happening on which camera and where do I get my most of my information? So what we did in the Mech 9000 especially is, we used our um, video analytics engine to start analyzing the video from both thermal and the optical camera at the same time. So the video analytics engine is aware that there are two streams coming into me and they have a full pixel map map between a thermal and an optical camera. So when an operator is looking irrespective of which stream, either he's looking at a thermal camera or an optical camera, we can always show them where the people are. So there could be a situation that a normally an operator maybe is tending to look into a traffic situation inside a tunnel using an operator uh, using an optical camera but let's say suddenly because of an incident there's a smoke filled up and at that moment operators don't have enough time to start switching between multiple cameras and and between the multiple streams to see where the people are so what we do is we take the optical stream and highlight the objects which are detected by a thermal camera in this case onto the optical camera and tell them that okay in this smoke filled tunnel there are people or there are vehicles or there's incident happening in this part behind the smoke. So the operator can then decide what action needs to be taken and appropriately switch to the right stream from where this uh, detection is coming. So it sounds like aside from taking the technology of thermal and the technology of optical, you've really applied it in a way that uh, makes a little bit more sense to the person actually using the camera. Exactly. Um, Exactly. So irrespective of whichever stream out of this camera operator chooses to look at, he always gets the object detections from both the cameras. And, and then, you know, it, it's also kind of a verification that if I'm not seeing something on an optical camera, but my thermal camera is giving me a detection, the operator knows that I should probably immediately switch to the to my stream and see what's going on over there. It could be vice versa that, you know, an operator is looking at a, at a at an thermal camera, but thermal camera doesn't have a detection. 
but an optical camera is able to do uh, uh, a person detection or a vehicle detection, and then you get that on top of your thermal thermal imaging. Okay, so we, so we talked about um, things that obscure your view: snow, rain, fog, smoke. Correct. Um, but there's also uh, instances where it could be perfectly daylight out, clear as clear as a bell, and yeah. someone is hiding in some sort of camouflage. That's also going to be a thermal application as well, correct? That's correct. That's correct. Okay. So, that's the, so in, a, in, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Yep. So th that's what I was saying. That you know, in those kind of scenarios, that thermal camera is able to pick up that there's a object moving in a camouflage, and then you can highlight this on your optical camera. So, so you have a detection that a, an operator looking at an optical image can still see that, okay, I'm, I'm seeing that there is some kind of a detection which is not clear over here. I'm, I need to switch my stream and see what's happening over there. So on a, um, on a more technical side of things, what, what camera system in the Bosch lineup does this replace or what does it augment? Like when you graduate in technical capability from this camera to, to now the MIC, uh, IP 9000i Fusion. Okay. Um, to be fair, I would say that this is quite a unique product in our in our family. Of course, it's part of the MIC family, so it it carries the value that uh, uh, our like for example MIC 7000 carries. That it's ruggedized. It's it's designed for use in an extreme shock and vibration conditions. Uh, but to be honest, there was not I would say an equivalent product in our family like a MIC 7000. At one point in time, we did have an analog version of a mech, which did have a similar concept of a of an optical and a and a thermal camera in a single housing, but it lacked. It didn't have too many intelligence features. So, so I would say yes, there was some kind of a solution, but the the usability and the user experience improvement that we have done with this product uh, was not there in any of the previous generations. So um, earlier in the discussion that we had, we were talking about. Um, uh, maybe patient privacy or or right. not identifying someone, uh, but yet still knowing that someone is there, something is going on. Um, and we're talking about like just personal privacy issues. Behind the scenes, um, there's a lot of concern with um, uh, data security and that kind of protection of um, people's information, um, hacking um, and, and all those sorts of things. What What does this camera have that IT departments and chief security officers can be assured uh, will help them with their mission. Oh, I'm, I'm glad you bring up this point because, you know, uh, like I said, this camera specifically is, is positioned towards the applications where people are trying to protect some of the very critical assets, yeah? It could be a government customer, it could be a private or a commercial customer, but people who are really worried about their critical assets. So, so apart from providing protection, towards physical intrusion, we also took care in this product that this, pro this product is secured to prevent any cybersecurity threats, or I would say an, an, an intrusion from a network inside this camera. So of course, you know that uh, in every Bosch camera that we produce, we put a, a specialized encryption chip, which sometimes we also refer to as our trusted platform module. This is a very, very specific hardware where we store our certificates, inside this camera. So this gives an opportunity for our customers to use this camera in a secured environment where they want to access the camera using certificates. But also we use this hardware or this infrastructure of, of encryption to do certain other very, very basic things. For example, um, anytime you try to load a, a firmware inside this camera, we check if this firmware is signed by Bosch or not. So, which means that it's almost impossible for anyone to pick up a non-signed firmware or, or a firmware which has been manipulated outside to load into this camera. So, so that's that's absolutely not possible. Yeah. Other than other than that, we have, I would say, some of the best practices in introducing cybersecurity. You know, we disable all the all the access ports from which somebody can illegally or in an unauthorized way access the cameras, all those things are blocked. We enforce a very strict uh, password protection uh, on the cameras. So we take care of all the aspects that uh, that a product needs to be secured to sit on a, on a network of a critical infrastructure. All right. Um, you know, that's one of those things when it comes to, to data security, IT security that um, a lot of folks that we talk to don't 
you know, begin the conversation with, but certainly other stakeholders within the company and within oh, yeah. the organization are, are, are very concerned about it. So yeah. what everyone though uh, seems to need is a demonstration of this thing, right? Sure. Um, I know that in uh, a couple of weeks, you and I and a bunch of the, the rest of the mid chess team are getting together to do um, a little practical hands-on evolution. Yeah. Uh, that'll be a good time. I'm waiting. Um, <laughs> we're, we're looking forward to it. Um, but on a, um, in reality, these aren't inexpensive cameras. These aren't um, low security applications. And um, we've found, um, I'm assuming that you have as well, that uh, a demonstration in somebody's actual environment is, is often uh, very beneficial. We've done them on airport hangar roofs and, and all kinds of places. So um, while we may not drag you out to those demonstrations, and, and you're welcome because they're usually at night, um, or in the snow, uh, that's our job. And so our team, Steve, Nick, Tom, the rest of the gang um, are out there and available to uh, come to your uh, critical infrastructure facility, um, nuclear power plant, airport, um, your port, your any of those kinds of places where this particular camera would apply. Um, our team's there to support your um, investigation, your your uh, evaluation and make sure that it's actually the right fit for your for your application is is that what you're seeing kind of globally uh, that's that's correct i think um once people see these cameras we have we have seen many times that you know uh sometimes uh, the moment people see the benefit of this camera especially with the video analytics running on it and how easy it becomes to to detect objects even when you have two streams coming from the same camera, how, how this, what we call as a metadata fusion, yeah, where we blend the uh, video detection from or, or uh, object detection from two streams into one single stream and display it on a camera or on a, on, a, on, a, on a video stream, it's just impressive. We have seen that we have been able to um, give such a good detection in challenging scenes where normally people would suffer from snow or from rain or even sometimes fog because to be honest, we did some extra work in tuning our thermal cameras to handle uh, tough situations like fog and, and mist a little bit better than what I would say our previous generation was doing. So there has been a lot of work do, to, uh, done in past based on our customer feedbacks to improve this, this generation of camera. And I think once you guys are going to test it in two weeks, it's going to be a fantastic experience. Well, we look forward to it. The last question I have for you um, before we uh, cut you loose to, to head back to the office and, and keep developing uh, great solutions for people is, um, uh, you know, we have the camera end taken care of. That's what you're developing. But the operator's got to look at this thing. So um, talk to me just real quick. What what video management systems are uh, compatible with this camera system? OK, so uh, right now, uh, I would say this is from Interface perspective, this camera supports a standard OnWiF integration. So any camera which is dealing with the standard OnWiF can, or any VMS which is dealing with the standard OnWiF can immediately hook onto this. That's that's not a problem. But some of our our uh, lead partners, I would say, like like Genetic, Milestone, they they already support this camera. And of course, our own uh, uh, Bosch video management systems. That's also where we have the full integration of this product available. Okay. Well, listen, Sasha, and I, I appreciate you taking the time out to inform us of this new release. Uh, again, it's the Bosch uh, MIC IP9000i Fusion. Um, it's a great solution for the right application. And um, we look forward to talking to you again soon. Fantastic. I'm, I'm eager to look at your uh, next shoot of results for this camera. All right, Sasha, and thank you. Bye-bye.